the moon rises above the clouds, as if to say, Hello, and welcome for the very last time to Warrior Land 3? Uh, that's a weird message, Moon. I thought it'd be more important than that. Hello, and welcome back to Warrior Land 3 for the last time, I suppose. On um, the last episode, we finished up the Forest of Fear and the Warped Void, and now we're going to finish the rest of them, I suppose, which there isn't a lot of. The first one of them being S6, Above the Clouds. So above the clouds, we are intimately familiar with how kind of obnoxious this level is to traverse uh, due to its verticality and its very easeability of falling down to the bottom. So let's just enjoy some airy tale uh, level theme from Warrior Shake It, a nice calming sky theme. Um, so here I'm going to do a little maneuver uh, where I just jump off the slime to collect that coin so we didn't have to fall down uh, and repeat that uh, section again. Um, also, just because it's very easy to miss it in this fast-forwarded segment, there is a coin at the very beginning of the level to the uh, left. Um, it's not super well hidden. You, you can see it. Uh, it does poke out a little bit behind, uh, out of the foreground that covers it. So it isn't completely invisible, but it is easy to miss um, in that. I almost forgot about it! Um, so there it is, just in case you were wondering. Um, so I don't absolutely hate this level. I just think this kind of verticality with the ease of falling doesn't really mesh well, mesh well with um, Warrior Land 3 uh, and or 2, I guess, uh, this kind of structure, or I guess more 3's structure, I should say. I was going to say 2 because of the uh, obnoxious kind of having to repeat things thing, but it really fits um, with that kind of mechanic of like, oh, since you can't lose, you're going to have to just repeat things as many times as it takes to win. Uh, I mean, that's all games in a nutshell, but let's not, do, let's not boil it down that far. Um, it fits well with that kind of mechanic, but with this kind of like, oh, you're going to have to traverse this level four times, uh, it doesn't work out so well. Because it's like, you know, we've seen this before. We've gotten to basically the top of this level uh, previously. We haven't seen everything this level has to offer, obviously, since we're here to get the blue. Um, but, you know, we've seen all of this level, and it's obnoxious having to climb to the top, especially with um, the disappearing platforms. It's just not really... I feel it's not super well structured for the gameplay Warrior Land 3 uh, boasts. Um, so something I noticed while playing this, and I think I mentioned this during the recording, but I'm not 100% sure, is that we actually could have gotten all of the coins previous to this, because there are no new coins uh, in the uh, blue uh, chest area. So you could have actually gotten all of your coins during your green chest run of this, and I wish I would have known that, because I think it would have structurally been interesting uh, just for the LP, just to get something uh, at a different time than we normally would have. Um, uh, this area especially sucks to have to repeat, so it kind of would have been nice to have knocked this out the first time through. But hey, we have the magic of editing to make sure that you good people don't have to experience all this garbage. Uh, but I did, um, and you probably noticed I keep pausing to check it, the coin amounts just because I'm not 100% sure of if I get them all. But we have gotten them all, so that's that. And with that, we have all the musical coins in above the clouds. I uh, don't know what I said in that segment yet. Oh, I suppose we hit the ceiling of the sky. Not something I expected to happen, but oh well, oh well, oh well. Makes sense since this is actually a room and a Game Boy and not actually a an actual uh, sky that we are above the clouds of, but I suppose it all makes sense in the end. Uh, it's a bit strange that none of the musical coins are going to be in the blue segment of, or well, the blue, where the blue chest is in the area. It's a bit strange that there's no coins there. Um, I guess it that technically means that you could have gotten all the musical coins in a pre previous uh, run through in this area. Uh, like, you could have done it on your green. Um, yeah, you could have done it like when you came to get the green chest, since um, uh, the green chest was in the area we just were with the birds and the zombies. Uh, probably would have been a good time to have done that. One would think after a lengthy edited segment of a level, there wouldn't be another one within the same level, especially within like moments of it happening, but it suppose there were. Suppose there were? That's not a sentence. That's not a word. Who cares? We're in the moon! It's crazy! That's nuts So It's also strange because it has this uh, unique background, like tile set to it, that I don't believe you see anywhere else in the game. Um, so it's just kind of odd, like here in this, like, what's honestly a very, very short segment. Um, they were like, hey, let's make a unique, like, uh, tile set for this. I mean, it's the moon. It's deserving of more. Makes me wonder if they were going to make, like, a moon level at one point and started, like, spreading it out. And they're like, no, we don't got time for this or uh, something akin to that. I doubt it since there's such an even amount of levels. Um, I guess maybe at one point there could have been, like, 30 planned or something. Um, who knows? Who knows? Who knows? I obviously don't knows. 
Um, and we do have all the coins. Yep, we do have all the coins. We have the blue key. We have the blue chest ahead of us. So we are done with Above the Clouds. What, what is kind of a bit of a stinker of a level. It's not really designed for the kind of gameplay Wario Land 3 encourages. Uh, but hey, we're done with it. And what we're not done with, though, is the treasure. It has gifted us the... The... Mm, my mouth just, like, failed me completely. The Axe of Destruction 2, the smaller sequel, which for some reason the Mario Wiki just referred to as a pickaxe. I almost said a pickass, which is kind of a gross statement, uh, now that I accidentally slur it out of my mouth. Uh, but yes, it is not just a pickaxe, it's the Axe of Destruction 2, the smaller sequel, because it's an axe. A pickaxe is an axe, it has axe in the name. I refuse to hear any arguments. Um, and it destroys things which it just destroyed, a wall in the East Crater, which we will now go to. Um, wait, no, this is not the East, this is the South, where the Cave of Flames lies. And we don't, we don't want to go to the Cave of Flames, we're done with the Cave of Flames. What we want is the East Crater, baby. It's all about the East now. The South, psh, we don't have, we don't have any levels left over there. In fact, we don't have any levels left in the West either, so... West? South? Who cares? It's all about the East and the North at the moment. Um... And actually, we are going to need the help of this Numo to reach Numo Heights of the uh, East Crater that we've never seen previously, because uh, I believe there's a coin up here. I'm not sure if we were able to see that from where we just were, but there is a coin up there that we have to, to collect. And unfortunately for us, you cannot escape the East Crater by flying out. If you just say, hey, I don't want to be in another stupid volcano level, that's too bad. You gotta be here. You can't fly out of it, even with the help of a Numo. The Numos can never help you. Um, and there's a little uh, warp here, and actually, I'm gonna go ahead and go through it to... Okay, yeah, I wasn't sure if this was a one-way portal, um, just because it's very odd. Um, so, curiosity ma uh, made me want to check, um, especially since, you know, we're at the beginning of the level anyway, so... Uh, were something to have gone wrong, and we wouldn't have been able to get out, it's like, what, we had collected one coin at that point? Uh, it wouldn't have been a big uh, upset had we not been able to... Uh, if it had it been a one-way uh, portal, it wouldn't have been the end of the world, because we could just come in, grab that one coin again, without too much issue. Uh, had it been like, oh, I got there with six coins, and there's another coin in the level, that would have been devastating. Um, this is the area we came to for the green chest, um, and for some reason I couldn't remember that stupid wall was there. Um, and I believe there's only that one coin there, uh, which will make that our third... Oh, wait, I needed, a, I needed a crouch. I completely forgot how this area worked. Um, I could remember that there was a coin back here, but could not remember I should probably crouch when falling through there. I mean, I guess that's how memory works. You remember the part that you think is the most important, but then secretly, there's a... Also pretty important. I was going to say more important, but honestly, the coin's the most important part, and anyone who tells you otherwise is l a lying to you. And I suppose we could get hit by the vampire bat transformation, uh, and that'd be fun. Especially since we're not going to see it anywhere else, but it's too late, because I've already left. Um, so goodbye. Goodbye, vampire bats. Goodbye, weird test placeholder enemies. Um, so strange. They just, they're just they so like basic. It's very, very odd. Um, but hey, they fit in with the weird aesthetic. Aesthetical. They, they work with a weird aesthetic in this game. I don't I don't know what my mouth is trying to, to, to place upon your ears. Your delicate, gentle ears. I apologize for the, the horrible, awful things that attempted to escape my mouth in that moment of... In a moment of weakness, when my mouth didn't know what the hell it was trying to say, and neither did my brain. It was, it was just kind of bad for everyone around, and this is kind of a strange uh, little platform here, but I guess it's not our problem, so who a cares? Who a cares indeed? Um, we got a lunk here. Lunk? Lunk? Hard to remember. Hard to remember, hard to know, impossible to know even. How are you supposed to remember the name of this frog, this prince froggy, um, if you subscribe to that, uh, official naming scheme, and, uh, yeah, we're going to need to light ourselves on fire to destroy two of these lumps, it would seem. Um, actually three, because I think this guy's going to respawn. Yeah, well, I mean, not respawn, but I guess replace himself, uh, where he originally was. Reposition himself is probably the words I was looking for. Um, <laughs> since he repositioned himself, we're going to have to end up destroying three of these lumps, slash lunks, slash prince froggies, um, to be able to continue on our glorious and honorable path of collecting all of the coins, which we have Almost, honestly, completed, um, because this is our second to last level for the entire LP. Uh, I was going to say for this episode, but this is the last episode, and you know that, because if you check that, that, that name, video name, I, I wanted to say name bar, but that's not really correct. The video name, you can see this has the word finale in it, which, for some reason, I always label things finales. There's probably better ways, or there's a, probably alternate ways, but I've always been a big fan of, like, the word finale. It's such a, such a good, like 
Crescendo. Crescendo! That's another one that's actually pretty good that I don't know if I could say and or spell. Actually, I feel like I could spell Crescendo correctly, even though I honestly... Crescendo? Do you get that, like, hard H in there? I don't, I don't know. Um, so, one thing that I should probably just, just touch base on real quick. Um, hey, why did I fast forward through Above the Clouds, but not the East Crater or any other instances of musical coin collecting in this game? And to that, I would say, yeah, I probably should have done that throughout this LP. Um, a lot of this was kind of loosey-goosey um, in terms of, like, musical coin collecting, because honestly... I've never done this before, so this is very much off the the sleeve of my cuff? Cuff of my... Off the cuff? Mm. I, don't, I have no idea what I'm doing, um, so a lot of it's been very much, I'm gonna just do my best, see what happens. Um, also, I tend to think like, oh, I should cut things, like, because, you know, at a point you... You hit a point when playing games where it's like, oh, I've done this a million times. I, I know this like the back of my hand, but honestly, I don't know these music collecting all these musical coins very well. Like you've you honestly like you've seen me like go, oh, I had no idea where this was, so I had to look it up. Um, that kind of stuff. Um, I mean like what that's happened like twice, but um, actually I don't want to throw this guy because I think, yeah, I'm not gonna hit that stupid block. I don't. I honestly don't think I need to hit that block because um, <clears throat> we'll be able to, even if we need to come back here, uh, fit in there unless we're supposed to like scoot a loot out as a. Um, as a flat Oreo, um, but I don't think that's in the cards at all. And actually, is there a coin down there? Yeah, because I don't think there's enough. Oh, okay. I was about to say, I don't think there was enough room for us to see a coin down there, um, but there was actually a way that we could get down there uh, without me knowing. Um, and also, that might be the last snake we're going to see as well. A lot of last things we're seeing, I mean, maybe that's a bit obvious to say, like, oh, this thing that we're seeing is the last time we're going to see it, um, you know, in like the last episode. So maybe it's not worth pointing out, but there's just certain things that I guess you get like weirdly emotional over. Like, oh, my snake buddy who like we use not enough times in this game, to be honest. I enjoy the snake. Can we go through this? Okay, I wasn't sure if we... Oh, we can. Cool. I wasn't sure if we'd be able to fit through the portal as Puffy Wario. And now we've kind of gotten ourselves in a place where we could honestly probably do that forever. I wonder... Oh, man, I totally would have put a coin up there. That would have been a really devious, interesting place for a coin. And it would seem that we can't kill Applebee's. Uh, by ground pounding on them, and you can't bounce off them, they just act like a platform. And look at this idiot! He is none the wiser, we're right on top of him. He doesn't understand that we could destroy him were the game to allow us to, um, but what we will do is we'll punch this- Okay, well never mind. I was gonna punch that sucker in the face. Um, now I'm just gonna throw a barrel at him, just screw him. Um, uh, we do, however, need that barrel. I wanted to punch him in the face, but the game, the game disagreed with me. Unfortunately, for the game though, I have a barrel, and I can use it to, uh, destroy another barrel accidentally. Um, this is kind of an interesting arrangement here where you gotta throw the barrel over obstacles and then pick it up. It's something that you don't see anywhere else in this game, despite the fact that this is honestly, like, kind of a... Uh, I almost say clever, but it's a interesting and kind of obvious thing to do. Like, oh yeah, let's uh, have, like, a little arrangement where uh, the thing that you have to carry, uh, let's give you, like, a thing, or, like, some obstacles that kind of prevent you from carrying it normally, and it's just kind of interesting that, um... You know, this isn't an obstacle that's used or utilized in, like, um, more areas in conjunction with other things. Um, I guess it also kind of shows some creativity on the developer's parts, too. Um, was it the last coin? Oh, hell, that was the last coin. Nice, nice, nice. Uh, I was worried that I had missed one somewhere just because this area kind of felt a little brief running through it. Um, maybe that's just in comparison to Above the Clouds, though. Um, so yeah, so I don't know. Maybe it's a shows a bit of creativity on the uh, developer's part that they weren't, uh, you know, didn't do the thing where you have to throw the... Uh, throw a throwable ob a, a throwable object over obstacles a lot. It, it's kind of interesting. Um, but what's also interesting is the sprite looks nothing like what I remembered it uh, to. I would not blame you for thinking this looks like a pineapple or some weird little alien, but what it actually is is a dogood buddy. I hope I pronounced that right. Um, oh god, what are these things actually called? The Shauko Dogoods? Something like that? They're like Japanese art that look like weird little people with like bulbous, like, football heads, like, little Hey Arnold's, um, and I can't remember the period of Japanese art that they hail from, uh, it's something similar, uh, used in, um, Breath of the Wild, I believe, um, Shaokomon is based off of it? I don't know if that helps describe it anymore. Hey, I can't remember the stupid, what the stupid art's based off of, but here's a Digimon based off of it. Does that help anyone but me? Who knows? I don't know. I know nothing. I don't know anything about anything, as we've damn well determined, and that was our last treasure we're going to collect in the game, uh, uh, disbarring the final music box, which 
is in the first level of the game. Uh, so let's go to in wood. In one? I almost combine, like, almost like in woods. In one out of the woods. Um, which honestly I feel is one of the, this is one of my favorite things about this game, that the first level is also realistically your last level. Um, like even if you play this game in a different manner and you come and get your, like, your music box, your, the final music box earlier than I did, um, since I saved it for the absolute last mission in the game. Um, you know, this is the last level of the game. Oh, wait, we can, we can't, we can jump on these guys' heads. Uh, was that, what was the deal with that other Applebee then? Because the other one, we just stood on him and nothing bad happened. That's so strange and weird. Hmm. Okay, well, whatever. Um, I just think it's really interesting that Out of the Woods is kind of both the first and the last level. It's very clever and neat and I enjoy it. And also, it makes the name of the level make more sense. Because, I mean, Out of the Woods is a very good name for, like, a, you know, a, a woodsy, foresty level. Because, haha, you know, there's a saying, Out of the Woods. Um, but it works very well. Because, like, you know, for the first level, Out of the Woods, that doesn't make any sense, you know. You're just, you're kind of getting into it, but then when you realize, oh, it's also the last level, Out of the Woods as a name, suddenly makes much more sense, because it's like, oh, I'm out of the woods now. I've made it to the last level, and is there a coin over here? There definitely is a coin over here. Um, there's also those weird gears, which I don't know if, um, <clears throat> I don't know if we talked about. I assume we, we have, um, but it's been so long since, uh, whenever we came and got the red chest here. But these gears are just the weirdest thing, because they're only used here... Um, and they're just so out of place with the rest of the tiles in this area. In fact, the glowing red background is also, uh, very just strange, uh, for this area just in general. Um, I mean, I guess the glowing red could work for, uh, kind of a cavey underground feel. Um, but the gears, it's just so confusing, and that's the only place they're used in this tile set. It's very, very strange. Uh, another very strange decision is, oh my god, that silky, like, animation of it getting knocked away is awesome is this ladder here. You can't get to this ladder until you get the Great Garlic, um, which I assume by the time you're doing the red chest for this level, you probably won't have the Great Garlic. So it just seems kind of odd. And oh man, that like homed in on me on a little bit. Um, this is very interesting that they have a little shortcut there that you're likely not going to be able to utilize. Uh, very interesting. Um, this coin here is also kind of neat. They give you two means of getting to it. You can either light yourself on fire with the torch over by the big tree, or you can just ground pound down once you get the overweighted overalls. Uh, very interesting. And actually, were there fish in this area before? I don't believe there were fish in this area before. I think there were snails when we came here the first time. Uh, maybe we came during the day, and they have those, like, floating snail enemies kind of patrol during the day, and then during the night. I guess they have fish that spit at you, which probably make this arrangement easier during the, um, during the night, since you don't have to contend with, uh, fish, or you don't have to contend with, uh, more active obstacle since the fish really only can bother you once you're closer to the water and uh, the majority of this uh, arrangement takes place higher in the air than the, the fish can reach to and actually oh, oh that's interesting I was expecting it to push me not to uh, injure me um, it's very strange and I also just wanted to check up there to make sure there wasn't a coin up there because it feels like a place there would be a coin um, <clears throat> I feel like that's where they, they would hide a lot of things in uh, Wario Land 2 in that manner where they would just kind of stick them just off screen like that um, Continuing the trend of very strange things in this uh, level are these leaf platforms that just kind of disappear when you step on them. I believe that that uh, asset's only used here, and there's a spider up there, and I don't want the spider to shoot his electricity at me, which is also weird now that I think about it. Why does the spider shoot electricity? Um, there's the uh, Pokemon Galvantula, and it's a previous evolution that are electric spiders as well. Maybe that's just like a thing? Uh, maybe a Japanese thing, who knows? Um, God, I can't believe I can't remember the name of Galvantula's pre-evolution, because it's such a good Pokemon. It's very, very cute. Ah, oh, God, I feel it. Like Vol something? No, I don't think that's right. And man, I keep I keep not hitting the A button. I have my, um... I keep, like, jamming the, the middle of my thumb in between the buttons instead of feathering the A button like I normally do. Because um, I normally keep the tip of my thumb on the B button, uh, and then I feather it at the A button, which I, I don't... No, if that's something you could do on an original Game Boy, but on my controller, I can do it. Uh, let's go ahead and just bully this little spider so I can get on top of him. And this time, I'm going to jump properly and mount the spider and climb to... Wait, does he go fa Oh, he goes faster whenever you're not on top of him. That makes sense and is very cute. I like that. Um, how many coins are we? Uh, we, we? We are five coins. We are five coins. Um, that's good. That's good. That's good. I think that's just the great key up there. Um, so yeah, just kind of strange that those, those leaf platforms that disappear are, um, a thing you only see in this level, like, uh, the only other disappearing platforms in this game are the, um, uh, what are they called, uh, I can't think of the name, but the red platforms, uh, that we saw on the moon just a moment ago, um, or, I mean, I guess it was two levels ago at this point, um, <clears throat> but, uh, 
Those platforms that fall are a thing that you see a few times in the game. I can only think of a few instances where you actually see them. Um, but the those leaf platforms are only used here, and that's very interesting and strange. Um, I guess, you know, it's just a thing that happens sometimes where you make an asset and it's not really needed in a lot of places. Um, it makes sense, and a lot of birds trying to stop us from reaching our final coin? No, that wasn't our final coin, um, that was our sixth coin. Um, I was thinking like, oh, we're getting near the final coin, but then I said it, and that wasn't correct at all to say. Um, but we're seven coins deep uh, now, which will allow us... Well, uh, you didn't need a certain amount of coins to get into the tree, but um, there being one coin in the blue area makes sense, yada yada yada, etc, etc. Um, so this tree uh, it always has a face, uh, but its mouth doesn't open until you get the magic powder. Uh, and I believe you got the magic powder... Um, in the Castle of Illusions green, uh, green chest? I checked this before I started recording, but I honestly don't remember if that's correct. I think it is. Um, and I think that's also was like six episodes ago at this point. So like, realistically, you could have beaten this game ages ago. There's so many not required treasures in this game. Um, and that's not even to say that, oh, um, you have to do everything I did for the first 19 episodes to beat the game, because there's so many not required treasures in that there's, you know, treasures that you uh, just straight up don't need at all. Um, you know, like the not like the, the ones that I normally would refer to as not required, um, in that they don't change anything in the music box, whether it's a level or um, opening a level. Um, but then there's levels like uh, the, uh, the Forest of Fear and Warped Void, which as of, like, completely, you could beat this game without ever seeing those levels. Um, so it's something that always makes me wonder, like, what treasures aren't required? Because there's things that open up levels that don't do anything in the long run either. Uh, just stuff like that, I think, is interesting. But apparently never interesting enough to actually go and look up, because it's just something I always go, huh, I wonder what, the, I wonder, wonder what the deal is with that, and then I just never kind of follow up with it. I don't know why. Um, I guess I'm just not very thoughtful when it comes to things that intrigue me, even though most of the time... Actually, it probably has to do with the fact that I'm playing a video game. So I have something to occupy me, and generally, whenever you have weird thoughts like that, it's just kind of like in conversation, and it, you can, you know, passively Google it enough. Um, like, for me to look that up, I would have to stop playing this game, and I'd have to Google it, and I've already done that goof. Um, go goofful. Yeah. There was something there, but I couldn't, I couldn't reach the point. I'm sorry. Um, so let's go ahead and just jump down here and grab our blue key instead of wondering about the strange kind of babbling that's coming out of my mouth. It's very concerning, actually. Um, oh, that wasn't cute. Um, the way that you have to fall out of the tree uh, to get the blue key, and then it brings you, like, literally outside of the tree. That's very nice and interesting. Um, and it just makes you repeat this arrangement again, which isn't too bad. A very simple platforming arrangement, uh, making use of, you know, the game's, what I assume is relatively limited space uh, by forcing you to repeat a, uh, <clears throat> a, uh, the hell is this thing called an arrangement uh, that you've uh, previously done? Although now, um, if you're like me and went after the coin, the arrangement is uh, considerably, considerably more difficult because now you have to contend with the fact that those donut blocks aren't there, um, which is kind of interesting. I believe that's what people refer to as emergent gameplay, where like the the choices you make as a player as you play kind of change the gameplay. I think that's the how emergent gameplay is defined. I'm not sure if that's like an actual definition or if that's like one of those like where, oh, that's so ironic, where people say ironic, but most of the time they mean, oh, that was a coincidence. Um, uh, who knows? I don't know. I'm not a smart game design boy. Um, what I am, though, is a boy who's made it to the boss of Out of the Woods. A monster? I think that's this guy's name. I'm not 100% sure. It's a very strange name uh, for what's honestly kind of a pretty not strange boss. I mean, it's just a big spider that shoots down silk balls that you grab, and then you dunk on him. Uh, once you dunk on him, you want to kind of start moving, because he's going to fall down and try and hit you. If he hits you, he'll stun you. Uh, the silk balls, if they hit you, you'll become Silk Ball Wario and go flying out the, the wall. Um, but if he ground pounds you, it's not the end, because you just get stunned. So honestly, um, my, the best advice I have is to come over here and like stand in the corner and just don't even worry about it. Just chill, because he won't be able to knock you off. Uh, even if like he knocks you to the right like he did with me, you'll be fine. Um, and then you can just use the time to counter attack and then ground pound on him. Uh, getting hit by the silk balls though is GG. It's just over if you get hit by a silk ball. Oh, you can jump on them. I forgot about that. Um, and let's just go ahead and wait for him to fall down. Um, he shoots these uh, horizontal uh, silk blasts, uh, which do the same thing where they'll turn you into a silk ball and knock you off. But there you go. That was our final boss standing in between us 
in the final music box. I'm just going to go ahead and make sure we had all eight coins, which this means we have all 100 treasures, all 800, 800 coin. No, 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 not 800. It'd be eight times 25. So it'd be 400, um, 400. I think that's 400. Um, but Hey, this is our last music box. So we have all the treasures, all the musical coins. We're good in the hood. As you can see, by the bottom screen that I don't think I've ever referenced, we have all the box with the music note in it. We actually have 999 coins, which is nice. Uh, we beat the game with max coins. And now that we fill in this mural, it's... Hmm. Lava? Hmm. Just look kind of hard to parse. I don't really get it. But hey, we have the music box. And this is my favorite of the music boxes. I love these little dopey dudes who jump up and they have the little blocks on their heads that bounce off. Maybe they're supposed to be hats. Um, it's a very enjoyable music box. Uh, and all previous music boxes where they opened up a level for us. This is the last one we needed, if you remember, the hidden figure in the temple, who I don't think we've ever referenced in any episode outside of the first, um, asked us to go collect them all to unseal him, because he used to be the god of this place, uh, so we can unseal him and then he'll free us. Uh, something I don't think I've ever mentioned about it is if you're confused about something or don't know where to go, uh, and if you go to your thing and, like, the information, which will show you, like, the last thing that happened, like, if I click on this now, it'll show the music box animation again. Um, <clears throat> if you're ever not sure, sure where to go and that doesn't help you much, you can come to the temple to get a, uh, explanation of, oh, here's the critical path you need to go down. Uh, so with that, I suppose we can go into the temple and beat the game. Or, we could go see what our reward is. Because you see, we got all seven of the prismatic crowns coloring in this colorless segment of the game. Of the game. And it makes you just appreciate how pretty of an area that is. What a nice reward. What a nice reward. Okay, there's a little bit more to that than there. Okay, you got me. There's more to it than that. It's golf, baby! You get more golf! If you get all seven of the prismatic crowns, you unlock the ability to come and play more golf! And if you get all 400 of the coins of the game, you unlock a fourth golf course. As you can see, it's the mural we've been filling in! It was golf all along! I'm such a fool. How did I not realize? I didn't realize it. What a goofer. Um, so yes. This golf minigame is a little bit different than the golf minigame we had been playing. Um, there are four different courses available to us. Uh, I don't feel like playing them all, so let's just go ahead and play number four, the one that we uh, unlocked with all those coins. Uh, and we're going to play this together. We're not going to skip it. You're going to play this with me, whether you like it or not. I, I'm, I'm not going to apologize. It's time for some golf. So let's do some golfing. And damn, I was hoping that would bounce over that little uh, uh, pond of uh, a the water. Oh my god, I looked this up. Actually, I'm gonna, I'm gonna scroll up because I looked this up. If you remember, uh, when we were first playing golf, I kept referring to it as like water and I couldn't remember what you call water in golf. Apparently it's just called a water hazard. Um, I just scrolled up my, my uh, like, let's play notes to check that. Um, which seems very strange because like, you get like, oh, I thought I hit that as hard as I could and the, I thought the guy went a little bit farther. Um, very strange and weird. Uh, this could go badly very quickly because um, this is a huge pit of lava. Um, yeah, I need to hit this like Oh, that's not good enough. Yeah, we have to hit this as hard as we can to be able to cross this. Either that, or if I hit it just a little bit, we uh, get the clearance we need to pass it. Uh, so what I'm going to do is continue to try and do the bad thing, and hit it as hard as I can and fail repeatedly. Um, as you'll notice, we've gone over par, and you know what, I'll, I'll just I'll just hit it over the thing. Mm, do I want to? Yeah, I'll just hit it over the thing. Okay, fine, you win game. I'll go ahead and do it like this so we can have a bit of leeway on our timing because my timing ain't so hot. Um, you'll notice that we've gone over par. Typically in the uh, the mini golf segments like this, if you go over par, it just boots you out. This is a full um, nine hole game of golf, I believe, uh, where your par works just like normal golf, where it's like, oh, you're, you're six over par um, as opposed to like, oh damn, uh, how far is that? Maybe, maybe about the halfway point. Uh, that's probably a little too hard. Oh, that was perfect. Nice. Um, so yes, this works just like a normal game of golf where you're trying to get your score as low as possible. Um, they give you uh, just a bunch of different courses, which honestly, I feel like this is, as much as I complain about golf, I feel like this is a decent enough reward for completing like um, like all of the coins just because uh, I like I would have preferred an extra level. Um, like, honestly, um, I'm not going to lie about that. Um, even though an extra level in this game could be strange because like, what do you give the player? Do you give them something... That's more like this game, uh, which would 
end up being like a lot of work because that's you know like one twenty sixth of the game that you or one twenty fifth of the game that you have to make another of, and that seems like a big thing to ask of like the dev team for just like a thing that like really how many people collect all the coins or get all the treasures? Um, like this is my first time getting all the coins. Um, I always get all the treasures, but I've never ever collected all the coins. Um, so giving away another level seems like a bit like a lot of work. Um, so honestly, I feel like. Just giving an additional, like, golfing course for this golfing mini game you get for getting all seven prismatic crowns uh, is a decent enough reward. Um, and I feel like this, this golf game is, isn't is awful. It's just kind of annoying how many times you have to play it over the course of, uh, you know, a single playthrough of Warrior Land 3. Um, and I need to hit the ball just a wee bit harder, it would seem. Uh, how far was the thing? Uh, so maybe, maybe about midway in the last red area. Yeah, perfect, perfect, perfect. Um... So now I think we're going to have to, yeah, we're just going to have to kind of chip it a little bit out of this uh, bunker. Yeah, there we go. So now so now that we uh, can clear the water properly, uh, and I might have hit that just a little too hard. Oh, cool, the backspin I put on that was perfect. I mean, sure, we were we were four over par, so it wasn't as perfect as, as it would seem. Um, and i got to hammer this as hard as I can. Oh, for a second I thought I, oh, the backspin, the backspin ruined that. Um, I either needed it to stick or to get more front spin on it. Let's see if I can do that again. I mean, obviously, I don't want to do it again like... Oh my god, are you serious? Uh, too much front spin that time. Let's go ahead and land it in the red. How about, how about we do that? I keep I keep interrupting my... Oh my god, uh, <laughs> this is just going badly on all fronts. Let's go ahead and just... Let's go ahead and hit the ball, because uh, we're oh, we're already over par, and we haven't even left the uh, the tee. I think that's what you call it in the golf. I'm not I'm not 100 percent sure. I don't know. Um, God, no wonder this is the extra reward. This place is just filled with lava, um, so it's out of bounds. Um, it just kind of biffs everything. Um, man, I cannot hit this ball hard enough. Uh, I guess this is like supposed to be like the extra hard one, because I'm doing so bad at this. So, just, oh man, that backspin. Mmm, nothing's going well. And we're already six over par, and we haven't even left the tee. This sucks. Cool, the backspin did not ruin it this time. Uh, but I guess to get back to that thing I keep interrupting myself about, uh, I feel like the, the, the golfing segments like these are just a decent recreation of golfing uh, in a 2D side-scrolling plane. Um, Obviously, it's not, you know, the perfect recreation of golf, uh, but I feel like it's a very nice simplified version of it. Uh, perfect. Uh, I say perfect as we're 11 over par. Um, but I don't know. Like, I feel like golf's not that bad. I feel like if you didn't have to do it as many times as you do over the game, or if there was maybe two or three more mini games to kind of uh, fluff out uh, the mini game segments that you have to play in the game, I wouldn't be as opposed to playing the golf game as I am. And... Uh, we actually hit the end of the screen, which makes me wonder... Oh, if you go flying off the screen, it probably just knocks you out of bounds. I was starting to wonder, like, what happens if you go out of bounds? And, God, our score is going to be so bad. Um, I couldn't remember how hard I hit the ball. Uh, it was obviously maybe about that hard, so let's go ahead and hit it maybe about the mid... Or maybe the end of the yellow? Yeah, oh, that was a little bit harder than I wanted to hit it. Oh, but that was fine. It worked out perfectly. As we come out 19 over par. Oh, it's only a five-hole game. I thought it was a nine-hole game. Um... Our score was plus 28, wow. Um, so yeah, I think uh, I think the different segments take place at different part times of the day, because like this is morning, this is kind of like an afternoon -y, this is night, uh, and this is whenever the hell. Um, we could go play some more golf, but I honestly don't want to, because um, I believe these are all different... Um, all different courses, so you could come and play and find more things, and obviously you could do better than that, because 28 over par, are you serious? God, that was such a bad score. Um... <laughs> But I suppose we'll go beat the game now. That that seems like a reasonable thing to do right about now. So we get to come in here and see our friend, a hidden figure, who's going to go ahead and congratulate us with two full exclamation marks. The weirdest amount of exclamation marks. I feel one's acceptable, I feel three is, but whenever I see two, it's always like, ooh, that's a little off-putting. And here we go. We get our reward of all five music uh, boxes playing in conjunction with each other unsealing the power of a hidden figure. Uh, very uh, Link's Awakening-esque kind of moment where you get like all the, uh, the instruments in that game? What were they? Were they just instruments or were they like spirit instruments or something dumb like that? Because normally they have like some kind of like modifier on them, like Instrument of the Winds? I don't, I don't remember. That'd also be kind of strange if they're called Instrument of the Winds since, um, you know, not all of them are like woodwind instruments or wind instruments at all. 
Um, oh, but I guess something's happening in the video game we're currently playing, huh? It would seem that the power of a hidden figure is unsealing in quite the unsettling way. Such as what the hidden figure looks like whenever he unseals. He's just a horrible clown man with horn horns as his ears. I almost tried to combine, like, horn into horrible and hornful. Mm. So, what would you guess? We were tricked. The hidden figure was actually a bad evil clown thing who wants to rule the world of the music box and break out and rule the outside world. And then he's going to do the dumb thing of the person who they needed the help of, now they're going to try and kill us. Uh, like, what? what? What's the deal, bud? I just helped you. And now you're going to try and kill me? So this is a hidden figure, and I have a lot to say about this. But first, what I want to show off, and I did this completely intentionally. You saw me not moving. I was jumping over the things because I, I wanted him to do this is he has a grab attack, which is the only thing over the course of Warrior Land 2, Warrior Land 3, that gives you a game over. It kicks you out of the level and gives you a game over screen. They made this just for this boss, and I find that super interesting. Uh, but hey, let's go in there and beat up the boss, and I believe we can skip that now that we've seen it. So yes, we can just skip straight to the boss fight with a hidden figure. <clears throat> This boss is also referred to as Rudy the Clown. Um, he got that name in uh, Dr. Mario 64. Um, but in every other instance of this game, uh, he's called uh, a hidden figure or like the hidden figure or something. In fact, I believe in the Japanese version of Dr. Mario 64, they still refer to him as a hidden figure. He doesn't get the name uh, Rudy the Clown. Uh, Rudy the Clown also gets referenced later on in uh, Fortune Street. I believe Wario says something along the lines of like, I wonder what Rudy the Clown's doing, or some dumb stuff like that. Uh, that's just full sale, me reciting stuff from the Mario Wiki now, because I've never played Fortune Street uh, beyond like watching the Runaway Guys uh, playthrough. Um, Rudy the Clown's a very simple boss, other than his one attack, which can give you a game over. You just jump over his collapse, uh, and you grand pound his fists to throw him back at him. He's kind of, he's a little bit of a, like an Andros or Bongo Bongo, uh, very, like, Legend of Zelda ass boss. Let's go ahead. Oh, I, I bit that shot. Uh, if you, um, if you're holding one of his fists and he ground pounds with the other, or he slams down with his other fist, he'll knock the fist out of your hand, uh, uh, making you drop it. And if you drop it, it kind of goes into, like, a stun animation that makes you unable to pick it back up. But there we go. He's a very simple boss. Honestly, I think Anonster is a better final boss than him, just because Anonster has a bit more going on for him. Rudy the... Rudy the, I almost said Rudy the Boss. Rudy the Clown, a pretty simple boss. Um, and with that, we've completely beaten Warrior Land 3. We have all the musical coins, we have all the treasures, we've done everything. Well, not everything. There's, we could go play more golf. We're not going to play more golf. Um, there's um, something else we'll talk about in a moment, because there's story to talk about in this game. It's Buck Wild. Oh, and I, I don't know if we ever talked about the story, like the overarching story of the uh, Mario Land slash Warrior Land game, so we'll talk about that in a moment. But, um, it turns out that a hidden figure slash Rudy the Clown's evil powers were used to transform all the citizens of this world into monsters. So all the things that we have been beating up over the course of this game were just citizens who, um, wanted to stop us from unsealing Rudy the Clown. Uh, because what, the, what he's about to say is like, we tried to, oh, um, no, he's gonna say in a bit like, oh, we tried to stop you because we didn't want you to unseal him. Uh, but you managed to beat him, so it's all good. But those, everything we've just been beating up are just these people. And that's just the craziest thing. Like, this little, like, weird, like, JRPG plot, like, happens, like, completely in the background, like, unfocused from, like, Wario's goal to collect all of the treasure in this weird world he's thrown into. Um, which, luckily, these people are like, yeah, just take the treasure, you saved our lives. Uh, even though you kind of beat us up a little bit. Uh, it's very strange. Uh, I've always been a big fan of this. I was, like... I was, like, so enamored with this as a kid, like, whoa, oh, these monsters were people! What did I do? Um, it's very interesting and fun. Um, Warrior Land 3 is just such a, just a strange game, such a strange departure for the Warrior Land games, but also it makes, like, 100% sense, like, with Warrior, like, he doesn't even give a shit! He's like, yeah, I got the treasure, who cares? It's such a good, good thing. I love Warrior Land 3. Um, so let's talk about it a little bit. Um, first thing I want to talk about is the plot of the Warrior Land games. So, Warrior Land, or, starting from Super Mario Land 1 to, uh, Warrior Land 3 kind of have a overarching plot, almost. So, in Mario Land 1, Mario sets out, uh, to go save, um, uh, Sarasasa Land from Tatanga. You do that. In Mario Land 2, I believe it's in the guide or something dumb like that, you find out that Tatanga was sent out there to distract Mario so Wario could take over his castle, and then Mario kicks him out of his castle. And then starting in Mario Land 3 slash Wario Land 1, 
M Wario's just been kicked out of the castle and wants money for his own castle. And then in Wario Land 2, he's chilling at his castle and he comes and gets robbed, so he has to go and get his stuff. Like, it's just very strange that they had this overarching plot and then this game, they're just like, yeah, screw it, let's, let's ignore it. Like, it also makes sense, because, like, where do you go from there other than just having, like, Syrup rob him again? Also, it's very strange. No Captain Syrup in this game. Um, William Trennan, huh? It was before he was Bill! Bill! Um, so yes, just very strange. Um, I'm a big fan of this game. Um, I like the level structure a lot in this game. Uh, there's some levels that are annoying, like the uh, Tower of Revival and Above the Clouds. Um, but overall, I'm a big fan of this, and when I was a kid, I honestly liked this game more than Wario Land 2. This was my favorite Wario Land game as a kid. Uh, now that I've grown up, honestly, I, um, I'm, I've come to appreciate Wario Land 1 and 2. I mean, 1, I didn't play until I was an adult. Um, but honestly, I feel all the games are about as strong as each other. I, I'd rank 2 and 3 about similarly, and maybe 1 a little bit lower than that. Um, but there are two more Wario Land games that we haven't played yet. But I don't want to talk. I don't want to talk too much about those. Um, or maybe I do want to talk much about them. I, I've played. I've played four of these games at this point. You obviously know I want to talk about Wario Land Four and shake it. Um, but that's the end of Wario Land Three, as it were. And we get the perfect screen. This is such a wonderful thing. And I. God, I remember a couple years ago seeing gifts of this like thrown around the internet a lot. Like, oh, perfect. Um, this is your reward for getting all the treasures in the game. Um, I think this happens when you get the musical coins as well, because I think I've seen this before then. Either that or I'm doing like a brain Houdini on myself. Maybe I, I'm also remembering the um, the screen from Wario Land 2. Who knows, who knows, who knows. Uh, but here's a reward, a screen where Wario gives you a thumbs up telling you you did perfect. Because we've done everything in the game you can do, and oh, it would seem that we can't actually leave the screen. So, um... We haven't done everything in the game. There is time attack uh, in this game, and what time attack in this game is, you, uh, you, for every single level in the game, the goal is to collect every single key in the level and then find an exit as fast as you can. Uh, I'm not interested in that, and I'm not going to be doing any of that, just because time attack is something that does not interest me in the slightest. Uh, there's also more golf we could go play, uh, but I've kind of said my piece on that already. Already, so we're done with Warrior Land Three. This is the end. Um, I kind of want to do some other games before I start Warrior Land 4. Uh, maybe this probably is the best place to talk about it. Uh, I mean, if you watched, if you watch this far, you're, you're probably interested in the Let's Plays I do. Um, so I might do some other games, maybe a game or two, maybe just one before we start Warrior Land 4. Um, but I don't know. Um, Warrior Land 3, I super enjoy it, and you can get on the 3DS Eat Shop if you still have a 3DS, which I assume you do. It's 2017 when I'm recording it. The 3DS isn't dead yet. It's on its way out, but it ain't dead yet. Um, this is a super good game. I love it a lot. I've played it many times over the years. It's one I always come back to and enjoy. Um, even if my enjoyment of it isn't as uh, perfect as perfect as it was when it was a kid, just because as a kid this was my favorite Royal Land game, and I've come to appreciate a different one more uh, with age. Um, not that I dislike this one at all. Um, although, honestly, I was kind of afraid to LP this game for a long time because I wasn't sure about the structure and, uh, you know, I wasn't sure if it would be good just because it's kind of a longer game than I've tended to LP. Like, this is episode-wise as long as my, um, uh, Banjo-Chewie one. I think, I think, uh, stupid, um, Pokemon Emerald is probably my longest, which makes sense because it's a Pokemon game, RPG, whatever. Um... But hey, I love this game. Hopefully you love it too. Uh, you can get it for cheap. Uh, it's a good game. Maybe if you liked it, you'll come back and play it one day. Or come back and play it several times over the course of other one days like I do. Uh, anyways, you've been perfect. I played this game perfectly. The game is telling me I did perfect. I did no wrong while playing this game. <laughs>